What's up, Internet? I forgot about a bit or a spiel here, so, um... I don't know, it was popping. <laughs> you, there's no way. You did not just break our 113 episode cold open streak. How could you do this? I did, because I legitimately actually it just did it. It so much to me, John. That counts. That counts. The the bit the bit is the warlock funny go burr. <laughs> are, you, are you disappointed? I'm so genuinely saddened that you've shattered the streak we've worked so hard for. I don't know. I thought it'd be funny to just just add a left field up. And seeing as how believe you've done this. I see as how I legitimately didn't actually have one planned. I was just like, ah. Rock out with your cock out. You know? Ruined. Ruined or improved? Ruined. Improved. Like Stewie Griffin, ruined. I think it's better. I'm just saying. Anyway. I don't know, the warlock and the wizard got in a fight and then they fireballed each other or something and that's just cancel. I don't know. I really did not have one planned. <laughs> The bit became a lack of a bit. Mm. So, uh, yeah. What's up, though? We're back. Uh, <clears throat> Dungeons and Dragons on their official YouTube channel has been releasing a whole bunch of videos uh, about the 2024 rules refresh. And, uh, you know, last time we did Paladin and, you know, I'm gonna be honest. I wasn't necessarily planning on going through all the classes, but here we are. I put a gun to his head. He did a little bit, yes. There was a... No, it's there, like a Glock. Like, I have it, like, right there. It's literally right. I'm pointing at it. I, okay, you're pointing at it. No one can see you pointing at it, but good to know, I guess. Uh, So, yeah, we're going to we're gonna hit the classes, I guess. So, yeah. Um... You know, and some got more stuff than others. So, you know, uh, some will be quicker than others. But I think today the plan is to hit Warlock and Wizard. Hopefully, if we don't tangent away into another dimension and just never get around to finish it. But I think we could do it. I think we can do it. Do you have faith? None. You have no faith in our ability to do no. both? No. Why? Because I know us. <laughs> we're going to go right. off on a 25 minute tangent about something stupid and we're not doing three hour episodes. All right. Well, listen, if we need to go three hours to get her done, then we go three hours to get her done. <laughs> no, brother, I'm tired. I'm tired, too, but I don't care. Brother, look, you don't. Brother, look, why? It's a holiday tomorrow. You just hang around and do nothing. You don't need any energy. You don't need to sleep well. I was planning on going to work tomorrow. Oh, that's a that's a mighty shame. <laughs> BRB killing self. Anyway, uh, if you would like to know the thrilling to conclusion of can we get through Warlock and Wizard, hit the follow or subscribe button on whatever podcast platform you're currently listening on. Uh, if there's another episode after this one, we did it. If there isn't, we did it. Another episode about Wizard or Warlock specifically. Although you'll be able to find out by the... Never mind. That spiel wasn't as strong as I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried. It, you know, it's fine. Everything's fine. All right. I don't know how to do this, so we're just going to go in raw, I guess. Right? You know? Raw. Raw? Raw dog. Raw dog. Yeah. All right, so Warlock. Um, I mean, Warlock basically just got better across the board. That was my main takeaway from this. I have I have literally no complaints, I'm pretty sure. I don't think there was anything that bothered me or, like, seemed weird. I have one small complaint, actually, but it's pretty small. So, yeah. Are you on that? Are you on that page? I don't think I, I yeah I don't think I can think of anything. Right. Um, 
I mean, their capstone sucks, but everyone's capstone. I've given sucks. up on hoping. Yeah, yeah I was say. And I've just yeah, that one. You know, I just, I just don't think to so, think about the capstones, and then that makes me feel better because no one has a good one, so it's fine. You just multi class, you know the, and then you don't have. You know to what the deal sad thing it. is? You know what the sad thing? Um, I guess, but you know what the sad <laughs> thing about the fucking magical cunning thing is? Mm-hmm. If you just made it an a an action rather than a minute, it'd be great. Um, I think they just don't want you to do it in combat. No, I know, but it's 20th level. Who gives a fuck? What? No. It's not 20th level. You get it at level 2. No, no, but to restore all pack magic spell slots is level 20. Oh, yeah, that's their old level 20. They didn't change that. Yeah, but they made... No, no, but they put it and they they folded it into level 2. Well, they have... You essentially well, it, have a weaker version at level 2. No, I know, I know. So but the idea is that the level 2 one evolves into your capstone. Thematically, yes. Yeah, but either way, the level 20 should just be an action. Because getting four ninth level spell or six level spells just for freebies once every short rest is so sick. I mean, that's pretty much what you get. But it's a minute long ritual. You can't do it in combat. And I know, I know what you're saying. The point is not to do it in combat. My argument is it's level 20. Who fucking cares? Uh oh, so you're saying the level 20 version should be common action is what you're getting at. Yes. Yes. I could see the argument. That's my for that. only real complaint. We can see the argument there. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right, think how cool that is. You're fighting Vecna at level 20, and it's like, oh puny Warlock, you're out to magic. <laughs> and you're like, guess again. Puñeta, and you pull four spell <laughs> slots out of your ass. True. True. There's something to be said there. I mean, yeah, that it's is like, true. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> there is a certain degree of reckless abandon that level 20 capstone should have for sure. And they just don't for some reason. It's like the whole situation well, like, is already <laughs> fucked at level 20 anyway. Why are you even trying? <laughs> well, yeah, but some of them are, though, right? Like, unless unless they've just removed um Divine inter uh, in, oh, oh we don't divine we don't, intervention entirely yeah we don't know what's going on with that one unless they just remove that entirely you're gonna have that at the end clerics have that it's one of the reasons why they're the strongest class fight me I'll win um <laughs> like fuck it I guess like if you let if you're gonna let fighters with all of their what's gonna be wacky woohoo bullshit deal upwards of a hundred damage every round with four attacks. Why is this a problem? Um, uh, yeah, I can't really explain it. I, I, there isn't, there definitely is a, I can't believe we're starting with the level 20 ability, but here we are. There's definitely, we're starting with the thing that literally didn't change. <laughs> but, yep. but yes, there is a problem with 5e in general where there is not, as far as I can tell, any degree of internal logic for what the level 20 capstone should be. They just, they just kind of picked them out of a hat. Some of them are cool, like cleric and paladin and druid, and then some of them are stupid as shit, like monk and sorcerer. I just, I don't fucking know, man. I also still contend that the barbarian capstone is not that exciting, even though a lot of people like it. I just, I just want more. But you know, whatever. It's fine, I guess. Well, here's the thing. I think the the barbarian capstone would be amazing. If it just set your strength to maximum. I still want more than that. Just just bigger number is not that exciting as a capstone. I a capstone ability. I think you know what it is. You know what it is for me? I just realized this just right now. I don't want any of the capstone abilities to be passives. They should all be mm-hmm. an active of some kind. That's what annoys me. I'm aware Druids is sort of a passive, but it changes it. <laughs> Druids a weird one because, you know, Arch Druid is like you ignore verbal and somatic components of Druid spells as well as material components that lack a cost like free spells. That's wild. Uh, and you get that in wild shape. It is technically a passive, but casting as an animal, just whatever the fuck you want kind of feels like an active ability, even though it's not. So that one's in kind of a weird gray area. But like 
paladin and cleric are literally active. I guess you could sort of make the argument that fighter is... It's another attack. I just... It's just so boring. It's just so boring. It just... What does Bard get? Oh, the stupid stints breaths, right? Yeah, Bards is the, even worse. Forgot Bards is even worse. Hate it. God damn it, dude. Yeah. I just... Yeah. They should all be... You do something. Fucking Ranger just gets extra damage. Stroke of Luck is a good... That's one of the other good ones. Stroke of Luck for Rogue. Stroke of Luck's awesome. Again, technically a passive, but you have to declare you're using it, and it feels like something you're actively thinking about and doing, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let's not even... Anyway, let's start from the top. So, what, what the hell's going on with Warlocks in 2024? The main, honestly, the main thing they did with Warlock is mostly just change how invocations work. Um, and then rework the subclasses. That's kind of the main thing they, things they did. So, okay, ooh, ooh, excuse me. So you get invocations at level one now, uh, which you used to get them at level two. Not that big of a change, because as most people want, no, you are only going to play a session or two at level one anyway. But, you know, whatever. Uh, you start with an invoke. You start with, I think, just one invocation. Um, you gain more of them and at earlier levels. Uh, you get a maximum of 10 invocations at level two, which is two more total than you used to have. So originally it capped out at eight. Now it caps out at 10. I would have liked 11, 12, but fine. I'll take I'm just being a little greedy at that point, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, no, and you're, you're, at that point, you're, you're like, I know, I, I agree, because I, I just want more. I just, you're just doing the, like, <laughs> how many more invocations do you want? More, more. invocations. Yeah, like. <laughs> yeah more invocations. <laughs> um, the other thing they did was change Pact Boons. So Pact Boons no longer are their own thing, and Pact Boons are just invocations, which initially might sound bad, but actually pretty good for base for mainly two reasons. One, we got two more invocations, so you're not really missing out. And two, you could hypothetically take all three of the pact boons. It is worth mentioning um, that Captain Crawfish only said three invocation or three packs. So I guess Pact of the Talisman didn't make it in for some reason. Yeah, I caught that too, and right? I'm not quite sure why, which is, it's unfortunate because it is, we've talked about this, and purely thematically, it's the coolest one. Thematically, it's the coolest one. Mechanically, it, it definitely needs some sauce, but thematically, it's one yeah, of the Yeah, I know, I needed ones. more, but like, it, it had I don't the even coolest know if flavor. Actually, I, I don't even know if I'm going to say it's the coolest one, but it feels like the most sort of unique one. Feels like sort of yeah. different, a little more out there. Um, but I guess it was cut for some reason. I'm not really sure, but that wouldn't be particularly hard to just add back in yourself, like just make it an invocation and say the player can take it as an invocation. I don't think there should be any issue there. So, yeah. Mm. Weird choice, but you know. Um, so yeah, the invo backed boons are now invocations. And you know, I'm going to be honest. I didn't really think about it until they decided to change it, but Pact Boons never really made a lot of sense to me thematically anyway, because they're they're like a special ability you get from your patron, but they're not tied to the patron in any way. They're just an ability you have, which is already what invocations are anyway. So why were they ever two separate things? You know, that is a good point that I just thought about, right? Like. Sorry, now that I just thought about it, not that I, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, it doesn't make sense that, like, th they sh they probably should have been invocations the whole time. And it's one of those things that didn't seem wrong, but now that they pointed it out, I'm like, yeah, wait, maybe that was just, like, a weird, dumb decision right from the jump. Yeah. So, yeah. There we go. Um, You'll appreciate this one, Isaiah. I'm sure you got excited when you read this. 
Uh, any of the Eldritch invocations that used to only apply to Eldritch Blast can apply to basically any can uh, any cantrips now, with some stipulation. That did get me quite hype, I'm not even gonna lie. So, yeah, uh, the one stipulation that I saw they mentioned was, um, so, like, if you want to put something like Repelling Blast, it has to be on a spell that uses an attack uh, that uses an attack roll, so it can't be like a save spell for Repelling Blast. So they have a little bit of rules, but basically Repelling Blast and Agonizing Blast and the, the one that makes it so they pull towards you or whatever uh, should all... You should be able to apply them to basically any cantrip at this point, if I understood how they described it correctly. Granted, we haven't okay, seen... Okay, but now, now I'm thinking about using that... Uh, now I'm thinking about using that for Shocking Grasp. And yep, I just want to know yep. how any of that's going to work. <laughs> I don't know. I just, are you just going to fucking, are you just going to wave dash combo people melee style with, <laughs> with fucking Chidori? <laughs> yeah. It, I, uh, could, <laughs> it would kind of just be I a I can't Chidori, wait to huh? go melee fox on people uh, as a warlock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Also, uh, just a reminder, in case anyone's unclear, we, the books are not out yet. This is all information that we're getting from D&D Beyond and the D&D YouTube channel, so we have not seen the words on the page. However, embargo for words on the page lifts in, like, mid to late August, I think. So all your favorite D&D YouTubers are gonna fucking nut all over your subscription box. So uh, get ready for that. Because uh, they all have the book. I'll get my umbrella ready. Already. Yeah. They all, like, uh, they're all talking about stuff they got to see already. So, yeah. They're not allowed to say anything yet, which is why they haven't been, but yeah. Um. So, yeah. This is another good one. So, not only are we getting more invocations, more stuff in the invocations, and invocations could apply to more spells. Also, with the exception of Eldritch Smite, None of the invocations use spell slots. A lot of them before specified you had to use a spell slot. Uh, they now do not. So you're basically just picking from a bunch of different class abilities that you're applying to your warlock. Huh. Yeah. So what about stuff like uh, like uh, like armor of shadows and shit? It's free. Oh. I, I think oh. that's what I, I to my understanding. I mean, hold on. Let me find the exact wording on the D&D Beyond article. Uh, with the exception of Eldritch Smite, which deals a significant amount of damage and gives an enemy the prone condition. None of the 2024 Player's Handbook Eldritch Invocations carry the using a warlock spell slot description. You still have spell slots. You still have spell slots for your packed magic but they largely no longer fuel the invocations you get from your patron. Instead, your Eldritch invocations feel like a wholly separate power branch unique to the Warlock class. You just like hmm. picking and choosing abilities, basically. Interesting. So, yeah. Some of them already did that anyway, right? Like, there was like, um... I always forget what it was called, but the one that, uh... <clears throat> The one that gave you false life for free. Yeah, that uh, whatever the heck that one was called, you know, like stuff like that. Some of them all some of those already existed. There's one that gave you actually. No, didn't armor of shadows give it to you for free already? Yeah, you can cast mage armor on yourself at will without expending a spell slot or material. Components. Yeah, so armor of shadows already did that. So like. Some of them already did that, so now they're just basically like, yes, they all do that now. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood. What I what I thought you meant was that there were no more invocations that included spells at all. No, they include the spells, you just don't need spell slots. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So it, it specifically removed the descri the descriptor using a warlock spell slot because some of them did specifically say that. I am actually wildly curious to find out um, 
what they're going to like how high up they're going to put invocations like uh devil sight because having pseudo true sight is very powerful yeah uh you know i don't know that i think i uh, the, the crocorator did talk about moving stuff around in terms of level requirement and shit like that so i don't know but then again you could take devil sight at level two before right so you could that's what i'm saying but that's very powerful it is they might not move it though i don't really know didn't say uh so yeah more invocations free invocations more packed boons long story short um then after that uh they have a new ability called magical cunning that they get at level two and what that does is once per long rest uh you regain half your spell slots rounded up after a little one minute evil ritual thingy um which i think if i'm mathing my brain out means that like you're gonna get one spell slot back for a while and then you'll get two for a little and then you'll get and then you get two yeah you get one until level 20 in which case you get them all well yes yeah yeah so up until level 10 you'll get one spell slot back and then from level 11 to 19 you'll get two spell slots back is how that maths out uh, so it's not a ton, but it's just enough to give you a little extra something, something. And considering I've always look, I've said this before. Warlocks are spellcasters that actually play like marshals. And so if you're playing a warlock because you want to be the ultimate casty wasty person, you're playing the wrong class. <laughs> if you just want to play spooky wizard, play like a sorcerer, <laughs> you know, like or 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 a wizard, depending on what kind of vibe you're going for. Uh, warlocks are not big, heavy. I cast spells all the time. That's not their vibe. Never has been. I think people assume it is, but it never actually has been. Um, and then, yes, at level 20, sadly, they have the exact same ability that they had, Eldritch Master, which is they sit down for a minute and regain all of their spell slots. You can do this uh, once per long rest. That is their capstone that we were talking about before. Them out. Uh, Warlock gets a. Uh, oh, I should segue these a little better. Shifting over to subclasses, uh, just like everybody else, Warlock gets their subclasses at level three now. I, I just okay. I get it. I get it. I do from a game design standpoint. In terms of teaching the game, having the classes get their subclasses at different levels is a little confusing from a from a gameplay standpoint. But thematically, a warlock getting their subclass at level three makes no fucking sense. It doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't. It, it, I don't. How you justify that? So I guess the idea is that you don't exactly know who your patron is until level three. Fucking, I guess. Like, like sure, you've you can made flavor a connection it that way. and your sugar. Yeah, like your elder uh, sugar daddy has tossed you a crisp high five, but not exactly have given you access to the bank account yet. It may, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I get. I mean, they'll probably have something in there. To, well, maybe I shouldn't assume that they might have something in there talking about it. I I don't know, but it it, it just. Warlocks getting a subclass at level three, clerics getting their subclass at level three. Clerics even harder to justify than warlock. <laughs> you know, like wizards getting it at level three. Now, granted, wizard got it at level two before, which I thought was stupid anyway. Like, why did wizard get it at level two? It was two, right? Yeah, Very it was two. Good question. <laughs> why the fuck yeah. did that? That one didn't make any sense either. Wizard should be level one. Cleric should be level one. Warlock should be level one. The rest, I think, are fine. The rest, I think, I can understand the justification. But those ones, I feel like, should be at level one. You know, like, Paladin, you're like, oh, but wouldn't a Paladin take an oath right away? Not necessarily. You know, you could you could be, like, a Paladin in training type situation or something. So that one, sure. But yeah, I... 
this probably bugs me more than it should. But whatever. Oh, didn't druids get at level two? That was dumb, too. Why did druids get at level two? One or three? Fucking make up your mind. <laughs> yeah, I, level I, two. I don't know. Two is such an awkward level. Two is like, like, if one, if one, level one in D&D 5e is the, like, forgotten stepchild, two is the, like, adopted kid who got put in, like, who got arrested and we don't talk to anymore. Like, level two might as well not exist in this game. <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> level two so... F <laughs> like, I get it, you know. You have to count one to 20, but, like... Well, level two might as well not be a thing. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Ranting about subclasses neither here nor there. The Warlocks get their subclasses at level three, like everybody else. Um, I did want to mention... In terms of familiars, we're getting a Slod Tadpole and a Skeleton Familiar and also a new familiar called a Sphinx of Wonder. That's a Celestial Familiar that has very cool art. Uh, I don't have anything important to say here. I just think they're neat. Yeah. I just think the they're Slod cool. Tadpoles I want to have a Skeleton. <laughs> Squad Tadpole is very funny. I want a Skeleton. I want to have Jerry, leader of the boys. <laughs> Bro, the... <laughs> Dude, the slot tadpole has me so fucked up. I can't. What the art that's of it? So, it's yes, but like it. That's such a cool idea. It's a fun time. Like, look, I, I will, I'll give wizards a lot of shit for a lot of reasons, but that, that's just an unapologetic dub. I mean, yeah, it's a good. You can also do a fun thing where like you could be a great old one warlock and the tadpole infected you and gave you the goo powers and like there's some there's oh some I just had a thought yeah if you get the skeleton familiar you will literally have the voice on your shoulder me oh my god <laughs> yes. Yes. you do anything just. Sire, Sire, my liege, <laughs> oh father of speed, oh my emperor god. of desolation. <laughs> oh Yo, all right, I'm running a warlock when this comes out, and I, <laughs> I, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna beg my DM to you do beg that. You beg your for GM me. to do that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I love this. This is oh good. Father of speed. <laughs> oh my god actually all right which one do you like better do you like all father of speed or emperor of desolation i you know i don't know <laughs> both both are good both are very good see? yeah probably emperor of De desolation <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yep i mean yep that's the thing you could do now uh hell yeah dude um uh Oh, I will say uh, one thing I did also note from their invocations. One of the warlock invocations just gives you another origin feat, which is kind of wild. Oh, yeah, yeah. You just get another feat. Your sugar daddy just slapped you another skill, I guess. You want magical powers or like you want the alert feat? You're like, uh, can I have the alert feat? You're like, yeah, I got you, chief. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. there's going to be a, a lot. A lot of people dipping for that extra feet. A think. lot of human warlocks granted, with three feet with three feats. Yeah. Yeah. Granted, those feats are probably aren't going to be amazing, but it's going to be very funny regardless. Yeah, I mean, we still don't know exactly what the origin feats are, what the list of origin feats specifically is going to be. It seems like what they ended up going with is origin feats are level one and then there's level four feats and then there's epic boons. So there's just three tiers arguably only two tiers because the epic boons are kind of their own thing so i'm a little sad about that i was hoping for a couple more tiers i was hoping the feats would be tiered to the tiers of play so there'd be four because oh yeah that would make sense but um i guess not i guess not i guess fucking not uh anyway oh and another thing is all of the spell lists for the warlock so everyone's getting expanded spell lists in general um because there's just more spells in the book but also all of the warlocks do you remember how warlocks expanded spell lists used to work remember this nonsense this oddly specific nonsense no so 
Warlocks got an expanded spell list. All the expanded spell list did was give you the option to take those spells. It did not guarantee you you get those spells for free. Mm. Now it I guarantees see. you get those spells for free. Well, that's good. So it gives you guaranteed extra spells, which is, you know, how like wizard works. Uh, Sorcerer also didn't used to get origin spells. And then remember the Tasha sorcerers did get extra spells. Yes, I did whole, remember there being a weird discrepancy about that. Yeah, that whole bullshit. And then people made their own custom versions of spell lists for the player's handbook sorcerers. So that you could play yep. like a dragon sorcerer and not be shafted to just having less spells. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yes, Warlock, they fixed that problem. Now the subclasses. Starting with Archfey, which got a pretty uh, a pretty big rework. And by rework, I mean Misty Step. They got Misty Step. Oh, my God. They have so much Misty Step. That's what they did for Archfey. Misty Step. And you might be saying, what do you mean? Well, you see, using Misty Step adds different effects like temporary HP or taunting enemies. Uh, also, when you Misty Step, you could do things like deal damage back and turn invisible. Uh, or no, sorry, that's a different ability. My bad. Uh, what I meant to say was when you Misty, uh, you can. Oh, no, you can Misty Step after you cast enchantment or illusion spells for more Misty Stepping. It, if you wanted to do a lot of teleporting, Play the Archfey Warlock. That's their whole shtick. They do a lot of teleporting. <laughs> Which... I, I, I'm i not necessarily... Uh, against it. I just... I don't know. It feels kind of funny. Because... It's just, the me- it's just a meme at this point. That like all... All Fey things... Just do Misty Step in 5e. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little, it's a little goofy. It's, it's, <laughs> it's got a little out of hand. So like they literally have it. So they get Misty Step as part of their spells for free and they can use it like a number of times for free and they get healing and they get extra damage effects when they use it. And then their beguiling defense ability is a reaction that kind of is like a hellish rebuke style thing um, where they can like reduce damage uh, or turn invisible or shit like that. And then, but then they get f- a free cast. So when they cast Misty Step, they get a free cast of an, ench- or no, sorry, or is it, no, no. When you c- cast an enchantment or an illusion spell, you get a free usage of Misty Step. So oh, yeah, brother. It's just like, okay. Um, mechanically, it's probably going to be quite good. Uh, Flavor wise, I question that a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I mean, like in terms of. Fey things, I, I like, yeah, sure. A little misty stepping. Yeah, but I feel like we could have done other things like leaning into the like. The illusion magic or the thing where they make people fall asleep and then like mess with their dreams and shit. Like there's a lot of angles you could have gone. Teleport machine is not necessarily the way I would have gone with it. But, you know, I've also never been that into Archfey Warlock anyway. So, yeah. I don't know about you, but yeah. Nah, it's, it's whatever. It's whatever. Like, even conceptually, I'm not that excited about the idea. Um, oh, I should have said, the four Warlock subclasses we're getting are uh, Archfey, Celestial, Fiend, and Great Old One. Um... I'm very happy about Celestial getting in the in the book because that's that's one I want to play at some point. Um, and I like the idea of a Celestial Warlock a lot. Celestial Warlock did go, did not go through a ton of changes. Um, just some stuff with their Celestial Resilience granting temporary hit points. Um, when you finish your magical cunning ritual, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the main benefit that celestial warlock is getting is the expanded spell lists are just going to give them more like divine style spells that they didn't necessarily have before that's the main thing with them uh i'm fine with that because celestial warlock was pretty good yeah so i'm good with that uh the fiend also not super changed 
pretty pretty much the same. Uh, they got a little bit of a buff with Dark One's Blessing. Uh, well, the way it used to work is when you killed somebody, uh, you got temporary HP. Now the way it works is if you or a teammate kills somebody within 10 feet of you, you get the temporary HP. So if the fighter comes in and steals your kill, you still get your temp HP. Um, and then you can <laughs> you can use Earl through Hell more because you could expend packed magic sl- spell slots to use it again. Hell yeah. So you can hurl more people through hell, which is uh that's a pretty fun time. Mm. I ain't even gonna lie. I th- I just thought about this. If you're in Avernus and you use hur- hurl through hell, what happens? You just like punch someone in the face so hard they go flying. They just like round the world in 60 seconds you. I'd like to imagine uh you actually punch them like down the hells and then they come back up to the top. <laughs> <laughs> like a Mortal Kombat finisher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just pop back up. They just loop around and solid. land from the sky. Uh, so yeah, you used I to only be able to do it once per long rest. Uh, now you can do it. I, assuming it only takes one spell slot four times. No, five times. God damn. Yeah, because you get four packed magic spell slots at max oh, level. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you get, I assume you still get the one free one, so five times. It's just How, how do wild. you think that's going to work with the um, get your spells back thing? I don't know. Good question. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. Because doing that a total of, of what is that? Nine, nine times? Nine times? <laughs> that's a little crazy. Uh, <laughs> that'd be that's very, wild. <laughs> that'd be very funny. <laughs> just at that point, you're just in like, you're just, and then they come back and you're like, I got a couple more of these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at that point, it's just like a portal situation where you put the blue and the orange right underneath each other and you just go through and you're like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I imagine you just, like the Epo Dempsey roll. <laughs> you just keep Doppler, get a Doppler effect as you fly through the air. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, and then we have great old one warlock who got a, like, big overhaul. Uh, This one is, like, almost, I mean, pretty much a new subclass. I think everyone knows and everyone agrees. Uh, Great Old One was one of those ones where you're like, this is a cool idea, but Jesus Christ, it sucks balls. Oh, baby, this execution, not it. It was... It was never good. It had no abilities that were just it just no, they just weren't worth it. They just never were. So now three of its class features got removed and changed. Let's um, go gamers. Yeah. They can cast enchantment and illusion spells with no verbal and no somatic components. So that's a fun one. Um they can uh, change the damage of their spells to psychic damage. They can mentally connect with someone else and then hurt their brain with psychic damage. They can like mind mind break somebody. <laughs> and the really fun one that I like is they have an improved version of Hex that gives you disadvantage on saving throws. Oh, baby. You mean that thing that should just be in Hex already? <laughs> yes. Now Goo Warlock gets it. So, uh, yeah. That's got me fucked up. That, they, that means they knew. They knew that that was the problem, and they were just like, mm, no. I'm okay with Hex not having it because the main point of Hex is, like, the damage thing. But I do think the idea of a subclass modifying the spell is cool, and I kind of wish they did it with the other patrons. That would have made Hex seem more cool. Like, imagine, if you will, uh, if you Hex somebody as uh, a, uh, a Fiend Warlock, right? And then, I don't know, they have vulnerability to fire damage or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, mm. that, I think, would be cool as if the patrons modified the base Hex spell. A little more of that would be fun. They only did it for a great old one, but, you know. Uh, but yeah, go, go, a great old one. Oh, they also get the summon aberration spell, which is a lot of the spellcasters are getting the Tasha's summon spells. Um, 
you know, uh, the Celestial is getting summoned Celestials. Makes sense. The thing that I really liked is they specifically mentioned you can summon a Mind Flayer with Summon Aberration. Well, so... Oh, no, yeah, Mind Flayer, yeah, yeah. Because it used to be able to summon uh, Beholderkin was the one I was thinking. Did it say that before? Yeah. yeah you could summon either a... Hold on. I'm just about to look at... Is summon Aberration 5th uh, edition. Beholderkin, Slod, or Star Spawn. Yeah. Star Spawn, that's what... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, for some reason, thought that was... A, it's not. You know. Yeah. So now they added Mind Flayer, which I just think is amusing. It's not literally the Mind Flayer <laughs> stat block, but still funny. Hmm. What are you going to say? No, I mean, it is funny that they're, they're like, you're just going to have a whole ass fucking whole ass mind, mind flare with you now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's to deal with the subclasses. Uh, great old one went from me being like, who the fuck cares to like, oh, I'd actually play that now. That sounds yeah. fun. Uh, so that's good. Um, and then Warlock's got a new ability, which I I love the concept a lot. I have a tiny beef with, though. They get an ability called Contact Patron at level 9, which is one of those things that you look at and go, yeah, makes sense. They probably should have had that before. Uh, agreed. Uh, at level 9, this ability lets them use the spell Contact Other Plane. I'm not going to complain too much. I just don't like that it's that they gave us an existing spell. Why is it not like divine intervention that just says its own thing with its own rules? Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's a little goofy. Why does it um, have to be through? At least spell? you automatically succeed. You auto succeed. But here's my problem, right? Spells are written in such a way that they often have stipulations attached to them because they're sort of balanced around the idea of a wizard is going to use all these spells, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we need to sort of balance them against each other. So they often have stipulations. The contact other plane spell says, well, ignoring the, the, uh, you can't fail it. So you don't need to worry about the going insane and everything and all that. On a successful save, you can ask the entity up to five questions. I assume the contact patrons is going to specify. You have to talk to your patron. Uh, you must ask your questions before the spell ends. The GM answers each question with one word, such as yes, no, maybe, never, irrelevant, or unclear if the entity doesn't know the answer to the question. If a one-word answer would be less leading, the GM might offer a short phrase or answer. I hate that. Yeah, not like, great. Like, I understand why the spell has that stipulation to it. That I get, because a random wizard is contacting a random fucking entity from the great beyond. Sure, I totally get that. But the warlock calling up their sugar daddy should not have these weird one word answers. That, that feels goofy. Uh, so, you know, like, I don't know about you, but if I have a player who's playing a warlock and they use the contact patron ability... I'm just going to give them a whole scene with their patron. They're just going to they're just going to talk to their patron in a normal conversation. Yeah, because that just feels better. <laughs> just feels better. I already did it anyway in our last game all the time. True. <laughs> you know, True. so like the only thing that this ability will really do in my game is just give the player a very direct way to say, I'm calling dad <laughs> like you can't tell me. No, I'm calling dad. And I go, OK, <laughs> but I'm just going to give them a scene. Either they're going to like, you know, the great old one sit uh, warlock sits down in front of a water fountain and sees like a weird burbling, like creepy, uh, you know, like reflection of their patron in the water fountain or like the celestial one. hears the twinkling of chimes and that conveys the message. Or maybe they just go to their fucking patron's dimension and have a chat like anything other than just goofy. Yes, no answers. I just that bugged the shit out of me. I was like, ah, you had such a cool thing. Why didn't they just give them divination then? It, it, yeah, I guess because contact other plane 
thematically it specifically says you mentally contact a demigod the spirit of a long dead sage or some other mysterious entity like thematically it already fits i guess is there logic for it i I guess but i feel like divination just gives you more information and i guess that maybe they didn't want you to have that more information but like why you're a Uh, well divination also has a bunch of goofy stipulations doesn't it I don't remember uh, divination. I don't it's been a so. minute. Uh, you ask a single question concerning a specific goal, event, or activity to occur within the next seven days. The GM offers a truthful reply. The, tr- the reply might be a short phrase, a cryptic rhyme, or an omen. Uh, I believe, yeah, I mean, divination could have worked. It has some stipulation to it, but it is a little more open. Although, I mean, you'll remember, Isaiah... I also made divination better than it's supposed to be. <laughs> true. Very true. I often Brett cast that spell quite a few times, and I often gave him way more information than it implies I'm supposed to. Uh, same thing with. um, What's the other one? Legend lore. Same thing. Legend oh, lore is oh, like. No, sorry. What I was thinking of was commune. I mean, not divination. Commune is the one where you can ask uh, three questions. I forgot this is also answered with yes or no. Bro, that's so... That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't think there's literally any of them that lets you get a... Here's my thing, too, right? And I know I shouldn't be thinking about this in terms of the bad DM perspective. But it's it's more than just a bad DM. It's like a DM who doesn't know that that's going to feel shitty. And you're like... You know, if they don't, if they're not good, well, if they're not very good at, at communicating what they want and the player just goes, well, now I'm just still fucking confused, you know? Yeah, I mean, like at best case, it, it's like a it's a well-meaning but still annoying confusion at the other. It's it's like malicious intent. Well, I think the other potential issue could just be a newer GM not knowing like a newer GM sort of uh, following us, you know, following the spell description to a letter and not really knowing what to do with it a hundred percent, you know, like, uh, yeah, that too. There's a lot of ways it could be a frustration. And again, for a spell, I kind of get why you have the stipulations. I understand the idea of them for the spells, but for the contact patron ability, specifically for the warlock who has a relationship with the entity in question, it, it feels like that should be more free form, you know? So, yeah. and, and you know, and again, at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to make it more powerful than it's supposed to be. <laughs> and I recommend other GMs do so. Because quite frankly, it's also just more fun for both you as the GM and the player. If you get to have a whole back and forth scene where you're playing their patron and they're sad, especially if they have a bad relationship with their patron, you get to be sassy at each other. It's just more fun than stupid yes or no questions, you know? Yeah. And maybe you could uh, you could say if the patron's really pissed off, they use the contact patron's ability and maybe they only get yes or no questions because the patron's mad at them. You know, I, you could do that. But like, yeah, just let it. It should be like divine intervention. It should have its own. It should just have its own little paragraph about how it should work. And then it should just suggest to the GM. This is how you should handle it. You know, like, don't tie it to a spell. We don't need to tie it to a spell. This is the thing wizard loves to do where wiz- oh, they're like, you get this cool feature. What does this feature do? It lets you use this spell we already made. I, that's not what I want. <laughs> Stop yeah. tying everything back to spells all the time. It's annoying. Anyway, that sounded like I'm way more bothered by it than I am. I'm not really that bothered by it. I'm just going to ignore it in my game anyway. But it was the one minor thing that bugs me. I like the contact patron ability as a feat, as a feature. That's fun. But yeah, tying it to the spell annoyed me. <laughs> anyway. Uh, last two little points on the warlock. Uh, they still have mystic arcanum. Uh, it basically does the same thing. Um, but it has the extra option to swap out your Mystic Arcanum spells uh, at level 11, uh, le- level 11 and beyond. So you can change what Mystic Arcanums you choose when you level up. So like, you know, oh, I hit level 12. I'm going to swap one out, you know, 
shit like that. Uh, but other than that, works the same. So cool. Um, and then the last thing, I don't think we noticed. I don't know that I I didn't notice this. I don't know if you noticed this. They actually for so you know how so level we talked about how for level nineteen everybody gets an epic boon feat. Yes. Um, they actually have a recommended epic boon for every class. So, like, if you don't know what to pick, oh. they'd recommend you one, which I didn't notice before. Uh, but good little touch. Did you notice that? I did not. Yeah. So for Warlock, uh, it recommends taking the Boon of Fate, uh, which increases one ability score to one maximum 30. When you are another creature within 60 feet of you succeeds on a fail, succeeds or fails on a D20 test, you can roll 2D4 and add or subtract the result from the d20 roll uh once you use this uh once you use this feat you can't use it again to complete a a short rest a long rest or roll for initiative so that's what they should uh, suggest for warlock boon of fate uh which i think that's how it works before i don't think that's any change to it i believe so yes yes that's warlock like i said basically just good stuff across the board little cleaning up little making things that make sense giving them a couple of things that they probably should have had anyway looks good to me and you know what else i like about the warlock stuff they didn't like slap in any any like really convoluted this is gonna make them way more powerful or anything like that it's just a couple of things that they kind of already should have had because people thought they worked that way and then like some reworking on existing abilities like nothing crazy yeah just mainly quality of life shit across the board yeah and just and cleaning cleaning things up which you know 2014 there's spots that needed cleaning up because quite frankly they didn't know where the game was going at the time not that anybody could have so now we go on to Wizard, the Wizard, Wizard, uh, the Wizard, the Wizard, the Wizard. My, okay, un- unrelated. One of my favorite lines in Adventure Time, where he's like, uh, uh, "Like no weapons, weapon wizard, and no science, science Wizard." And you're like, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, the Wizard, uh even longer spell list because there's more spells in the book in general so more spells more spells uh and in the words of of joffrey croffery the wizard's thing is still goddamn that's a lot of spells uh he didn't say it that way but you know i'm saying it that way because goddamn that's a lot of spells <laughs> uh we actually have oh, a count I don't think we have a count no but it's or maybe did he mention a number i don't remember but it's gonna be a lot <laughs> it's gonna be a lot so uh a, a wizard again i'm pretty much happy across the board i know you have a complaint get to it hold it in i say it till we get to the subclasses but as Every far as the base class go clenching. As far as the base class goes, pretty much good to go. I begrudgingly don't hate it. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I think Wizard got the least changes of anything we've seen and probably will get the least changes of anything. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, it, it, a lot of it stayed the same. Just some minor shit. I mean, here's the thing, right? It's yes. in base 5e. It's the second best class. They really didn't need to make many changes. Like. Most people would say it's the best class. You're wrong. It's cleric. So it's cleric, wizard, druid, and then everything else in no particular order. I think paladin should be up there somewhere or would be in a lot of there. I probably I I could see it being fourth. I could see paladin being third or some at least for some people. uh, For some people, it's just that wizard druids at 20th level have infinite health. Are you just talking about how something how strong something is mechanically? Yes. Oh, I thought you were just talking about how much people like it. No, no, it turned no. It, I think Paladin probably a strong. I think people like Wizard more than Cleric. I do personally. Um, I don't. 
In terms Do of I, like I popularity, know. I could see it'd be wizard than paladin because paladin just has strong, such yeah. powerful fucking narrative weight to it. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah, paladin is a lot. Of, and and you know what's funny? Everyone, not that we look, we already beat this horse, so we're not going to beat it again. But I just want to point out, everyone complained about a lot. You know, oh, paladin divine smite got nerfed, and I, and I get it, and people are annoyed. But I would like to point out that a lot, all of the other stuff that paladin got are a lot of the things that I think like divine smite to me is not even the coolest part about paladin and all the other stuff that they have got better, like the auras and their channel divinity and the fine greater steed changes, like all that stuff. I actually got, got quite a bit better and divine sense, not sucking absolute fat donkey dicks. So for me, paladin's pretty much a W across the board. So, you know, I just, uh, it's a, Primarily W for me. There's, I think it took a couple L's, but overall, no. Like again, I get what people are frustrated about, but yeah, I just think it's funny that people are like, "Put Divine Spite," and I'm like, I don't even really give that much of a shit about Divine Spite. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, Wizards basically got the least changes. Um, one thing I love this a lot, and I love this, I love this for one particular reason, because this isn't even that powerful an ability. All right, Wizards can swap cantrips on a long rest cantrips that's not even really that powerful but i really fucking love that and the reason i really fucking love that is because literally nobody else can do it only wizard can do it and that makes it sick i, I love kind of struggle with that one why because i want it to be that i want it to be something everyone can do Nah, keep it for the wizard. I think it, it just makes seems sense. like a fundamental mechanic thing for me. I, there's there, your your cantrip list is already so, like pretty small for most every other class. I don't even think anyone could, would really utilize it that well. I think it only really makes sense on the wizard. Warlock would. Uh, warlock maybe. They are cantrip kings after all. But honestly, though, with the way with the Eldritch Invocation changes and stuff, I don't even think you're you're probably not going to be in a situation where you're going to want to swap cantrips anyway. You're probably going to have one or two that are the ones you use because they're the ones you modified the shit out of, you know. So, yeah, I, I'm perfectly I think it should be just a wizard thing. I love that. I mean, I think every class should have certain things that like arguably more I mean every class does I think that every class should have probably more stuff that only they can do but like that's a whole other rabbit hole um but also in terms of in terms of um class features features not feats I will never get over how stupid that is why didn't they call them abilities class abilities yeah I just why did they not call them abilities they're officially called features I don't know why um in terms of in terms of wizard features, uh, they have the least in the game. Like they have the least features that come directly from the class. So giving them a little extra house for something like this, big fan. Uh, they also get the ability Ritual Adept, which seems like a new ability. It's not actually a new ability. They just put it in its own paragraph because people don't know how to read and kept skipping over it before. So. Wait, wait, real they quick. Put it in its own paragraph. Like, so, Jawcraw basically said that, but in the nicest way possible. He was like, you know, people read, they read so fast that sometimes they just don't catch that. Yeah. <laughs> that was definitely him being like, so people just don't fucking read. <laughs> that, is, that is, that is basic, basically that, right? the way you he caught how, yeah. how, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> basically the way he phrased it where he he was like you know there's a lot going on in the spell casting section so people would miss it sometimes I, every like, you know he every bone in his uh, body was like y'all motherfuckers don't read that's why we're taking yeah. it out of there yeah yeah he was he said very nicely that none of you motherfuckers can read uh and i thought that was very funny um then they also gave him another new feature at level two. Uh, feels again, level two is the the stepchild in solitary confinement. We don't talk about it anymore. Uh, but they get they get an ability called scholar. It gives them expertise. 
uh, the list, uh, the list for expertise that they can, because that it's not, they can't get expertise in anything, uh, is Arcana, history, investigation, medicine, nature, or religion. So we can avoid the problem where the rogue is better at Arcana than the wizard now. Um, those all make sense. I did think investigation was kind of a weird one. Truly, there is justice in the world. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, uh, I feel like they just, for propriety, were like, let's just make it all in spell, uh, in checks. So I'm pretty sure it's literally all in checks that they can take it, wait, um, expertise in. Is investigation an intelligence check? I don't remember. Yes. Positive. I take it enough to, I, I, I make in one of my highest stats and take investigation enough. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay. I will have to, I will, I will take your word. I'm going to check right now. Um, so yeah, they get scholar, they get expertise. Wizard can be big brain nerd now as they were always meant to be. This is one of those abilities that's like, guys, how the fuck was this not in the original game? <laughs> yep. How was this not in here before? <laughs> Don't understand. Anyway, hit him with the but for why? <laughs> but for why? Yeah. Uh, and then we got another new feature called memorize spell. You get at level five. Wizards can now swap out one prepared spell in their spell book whenever they take a short rest. Um, again, sick as hell and not something again. I don't think anyone else can do very into that. Uh, it might not seem like a big deal because it's only one spell. But, you know, most of the time when you're trying to, when you wish you could swap something else out, it's because you wanted one particular spell, you know, so like it's not that big a deal so yeah memorize spell big fan basically wizards are you know they're the most versatile spellcasters which has always been the case but now they also have the ability to move things in and out of their repertoire making them even more versatile so yeah good stuff uh also we have used the word versatile so many times at this point it it holds no meaning anymore <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if this, right? Like, it's just, it's just gone. It's lost in the house. Okay. The wizard subclasses. Get to the subclass. Uh, I yes, I know. So, I just to be clear. All right. So, the four wizard subclasses we're getting because everyone gets four subclasses in 2024. The four wizard subclasses we are getting are Abjurer, Diviner, Evoker, and Illusionist. They changed it from the school of whatever. I don't know why. I kind of like the school of whatever, but they changed it. Fine. It's not really a big deal. I just thought it was odd. So those are the four we're getting. I, for most of the other um, classes... The four subclass thing, not a big deal. I'm fine with it. I didn't necessarily expect every subclass, right? Wizard and cleric, however, I'm a little sad about it. Not going to lie. I would like to have all of the wizard subclasses and all of the cleric subclasses because for those two particular classes, it just kind of makes the most sense. So, yeah. It, yeah, it, it literally doesn't make sense to not have them all. Have, there are yeah, distinct it, spell it like uh, schools of magic. Why yes. would you leave them out? Like, what the fuck? I, I I'm holding I it. Honestly, in. this is this is the this is me. I'm rattling the cage, Josh. I, yeah, yeah. I'm trying so hard. I yeah, I, I, I just really, don't get it. It just bugs the <clears throat> living shit out of me. The only on the only explanation or justification that makes sense to me is just they only had so much time to work on the book. They need, you know, they had to decide how much work was being done for for each of the, you know, they, they were doing three books. They had to decide how much work was being dedicated to each book. They went, OK, 
We need to we need to limit how many subclasses every class is going to get. So we're cutting out the wizard and the cleric subclasses. I I think I think that's I think they just it was just a time constraint, to be honest. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. I don't know about you, but, you know. I, yeah, I mean, I get it. I just... Yeah, no, I... I, it, it's, I like yeah, it. it's, it's not great. It's not great, for sure. So, uh, basically, we're, so we're getting Abjurer, Diviner, Evoker, and Illusionist, which means the two subclasses that me and Isaiah want got cut. <laughs> Yep. Because I wanted Necromancer and Isaiah wanted Conjurer and we got neither of them. So L's across the board. I just don't get I just don't get why you'd put Illusionist in genuinely. Um because apparently and you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna agree with this, I have a feeling. So their choices were they wanted to put two opposite spectrum subclasses. So Evoker and Diviner are opposite. Sorry, uh, Evoker and Abjurer are opposites because Evoker is attacking magic. Abjurer is defending magic. And then Diviner and Illusionist are options because Diviner sees the truth. Illusionist hides the truth. That was their justification. That was I get that it. was That's still stupid. I, yeah, I. That was what crawfish. That was what the crawfish deemed. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, that being said, it's funny what you said. Why did they put illusionist? Because illusionist got the most attention and kind of went from being like not that interesting to pretty cool, actually. <laughs> so, at least they made it better. Because it's unfortunate that I am at this point diegetically opposed to giving a shit about it. Uh, fair enough. I mean, because Illusionist in 2014 was definitely not great. No, it was whatever as fuck. And uh, that's yeah. where it should have fucking stayed. But, uh... Alright, well, that was aggressive. Uh, Alright, so well, let's go with what three we have. So, Abjurer got some pretty good love. Um... They got basically more spells in their repertoire because certain spells got changed around to be abjuration spells that weren't before. Uh, Crocorino did not specify what spells that are they are, but he was basically like, they have more now. Uh, the Spellbreaker ability is a new one that they got. Um, so they can... They get... Uh, oh, I did that out of order. What? Brain? Oh, I wrote it out of order in my notes. Okay, whatever. It's fine. We'll commit to the bit. At level 10, they get the Spellbreaker ability, um, which gives them Counterspell and Dispel Magic as always prepared spells that don't count against their usual, you know, their list. Um, and they can cast Dispel Magic as a bonus action. And the really cool standout on this particular ability is if you use counterspell or dispel magic and it fails, you do not lose the spell slot as an abjure. So you could just go buck wild with those spells, basically. Which is I'm I'm that's a pretty cool one. I'm pretty into that. Can't 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 lie on that one. That one's a uh, it, it's selling me a bit on abjure. I don't know about I don't know about you. No, I mean, Ab Abjur is cool, so... Uh, Abjur is actually my second favorite uh, uh, school of magic. So oh, okay. I do really like Abjur. Okay. Because, um, like, it, it's... It, like, it, to me, it has, besides Conjurer, has, like, the most interesting just sort of outset, like, the idea of, like, magic innately has this whole thing where it affects other things... I, there has to be some sort of school of thought to counteract that or else disaster happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, no, I, I do really like Abjur. I, I like that they're... they're uh, they just double down, really. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, and then their Arcane Ward ability just got better. Um, you, uh, you can refill it directly as a bonus action by expending a spell slot, and your resistances now apply to your Arcane Ward. So, like, if you have fire resistance and you use it on yourself, your ward has fire resistance. Uh, because the ward, the Arcane Ward, you know, has an HP pool. Um, and if... Uh, you cast it on somebody else, like if you use your arcane ward on somebody else, it uses their resistances. So if they have poison resistance and you put the ward up, the ward has poison resistance on them. This also does apply to vulnerabilities, though, by the way. So if you have a vulnerability to something, yeah, you will, the ward so, will take the double damage, but players so rarely have that. Y- yes, it, I do find it a little goofy. What? Like, I get it uh, that the vulnerabilities apply as well. I, yeah, I get I why I think it's a little doofy. I think they could have just left that bit out. Yeah, I guess. And I get it. it's like, oh, well, that, you know, it has to have a downside. It's only or it's like, yeah, but like. Eh. I don't know. You know, I think that's a pretty I think that's a pretty reasonable downside, considering how vulnerability is pretty rare for players to have anyway. You know, yeah, it is. I don't know. Um, Diviner basically unchanged because Diviner was one of the best wizard subclasses before anyway. They got some yes. language clarification and the sea invisibility spell for free and uh, better dark vision. Yeah. <laughs> so Diviner. Diviner still cool. Diviner was cool. Diviner is still cool. It's still very powerful. Still good. Uh, Evoker, pretty much the same thing. The biggest change in Evoker is that you get can you get uh, potent cantrips first, and then sculpt spell later. Because originally you got sculpt spell at level two and potent cantrips at level six. Now you get potent cantrips at level two and sculpt spell at level six. Uh, which I think is actually kind of makes more sense because your cantrips yes. are your earliest spells, so them getting better. Like, thematically, it makes more sense that your cantrips would be better first. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. Um, and also, basically, like, now... The the ability to max damage your evocation spells feels like a more powerful thing to get. Well, that's not... Uh, scope spell doesn't doesn't do the max... Or... No, oh, my, yeah, that's right. My bad, my bad. Uh, that's that's the stop people from taking the saving throws. Yes. Yeah, the scope spell is like, hurt your fr- is like avoid hurting your friends. Um, potent yeah. cantrip too also got adjusted because uh, the saving throw one uh, they used to take half damage it also now does automatic dam. it does half damage on attack spells also so yeah so potent cantrip also got a little bit better other than that I think evoker is literally the same <laughs> Because again, Evoker pretty good. Over Channel is just amazing. Bing bang boom. Love Over Channel. Big fan. Uh, and then the Illusionist, the Illusionist, uh, who got the most stuff. Illusionist can ignore verbal components on illusion spells, and they have a greater range on their illusion spells, um, which is good because. The whole idea of like the illusionist hides behind the tree and then cast an illusion spell to like distract somebody, but you have to say something verbally out loud to cast the spell, and then someone could be like, "Hey, who's that behind the tree?" It just kind of defeats the whole shtick. Uh, so you won't have that problem anymore. <laughs> Thank God. That was <laughs> that was one of the that was honestly one of those things that made me look at illusionists and go, "But for why? <laughs> what is the point?" Yeah. Uh, then at level six, also, they get an ability. That, and I think the more the, I was gonna say, the more important use of this is that this this the one thing I do admittedly like about this is that it negates that thing that happens in every fucking campaign where you're yes. in, you're in the room. There's a tense yes. thing going on. You're yes. talking to the king, and you're like, "Can I like? Can I just fucking make the like the badge of honor or something in my hand?" And then the yes. GM goes, "Yes." How quiet do you think you can cast that spell? Bitch, yeah. boy, and you're yeah. like, oh, 
<laughs> this does make you this does make me look at subtle spell and go do we need you anymore <laughs> yeah, but what, what what am i a joke to you yes yeah i'm speaking of i'm very very interested to see what the final version of sorcerer is because they had some pretty fun ideas in the ua so i'm hoping at they least did, some yeah. of i'm hoping at least some of that survived I know they're not going to get the limited wish. I know that's not going to happen. But man, was that so fucking cool. Yep. They're not going to get it. I know they're not. Anyway. No, because that would be far too interesting. Yep. Basically. Um, and then at level six, uh, Illusionist gets the ability Phantasmal Creatures, which gives them the Summon Beast and Summons Fey spells as always prepared spells. Now, on its own... You're like, okay, sure, fine. They have a nice little modifier to it, though. And this is where, Isaiah, I think there's a glimmer of hope for you. But hear me out. Hear me out on this train of thought. So, they have Summon Beast and Summon Fey as always prepared spells with Phantasmal Creatures. Summon Beast and Summon Fey are conjuration spells. The Illusionist Wizard can cast them as illusion spells. They can transform them into illusion spells to make illusory versions of the summons that have, I think, I think uh, Croff, Croffy said half the HP. Um, and they can do that without expending a spell slot. So they can make weaker versions that are illusions at, uh, you know, for free once per long rest. And I think it's once each, so one beast and one fey. The reason I say there might be hope here is because if Illusionist is modifying the summon spells to work with their school, then if we do get Conjurer Wizard down the road, there's some cool potential there for the Conjurer Wizard to basically make really buffed up versions of the summon spells. Yeah, you're not the first person to tell me that. I, the I'm going to keep my expectations there. real low That's and fair. be pleasantly surprised later. That's fair. I'm just pointing it out that 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 the fact that Illusionist is modifying summons make me think there's some cool potential for like more powerful Conjurer summons. Mm-hmm. Um, they already had that with Durable summons, right? In 2014, so you could just make basically a better version of that. Uh, and then the last thing with, uh, oh, and also we don't know. They haven't said we're going to get the other wizard subclasses back and they haven't said anything about porting over old subclasses, but like there's no reason they wouldn't. It would be really silly for them not to. So yeah, like there's a lot of subclasses that got left out in like Xanathar's and Tasha's well more so Xanathar's so you know they gotta make some kind of <laughs> I jokingly said I was like the next book they're gonna release for 2024 is gonna be called Ta- uh, Tasha's Tasha Thar's Cauldron of Everything <laughs> <laughs> because they can just take everything from those two books and smoosh them in there and slap that bitch on and you're good to go um so yeah, Honestly, if we, I, I'll, I'll tell you what. All right. Yes, I was gonna say I'm, I'm, I, I want to make my prediction for conjuration. It, this is what I want to be a thing. Okay. Because it's like, oh, they have more health and shit. That's not actually what I want. I what I want for conjuration okay. is for you to get bigger things. I don't necessarily want the things I have to be stronger. I just want bigger, right? In the same way that like people are like. Why is it the only cool dragon you can be as a druid, an, an ancient white dragon? I, I have that same issue with Conjuration Wizard. Let me just summon an ancient red dragon at level 20. You know what I mean? I'm not asking for that at, at any any realistic level, right? I'm not asking for that at 17th level or anything. But level 20 or any, something high like that, let, let, let it just go buck wild, you know? I mean, now at we lower have, levels, I, I want it to go a little more buck wild than it does, but I, I want bigger things. I mean, we have stuff like the summon draconic spirit, so you hypothetically could have like a really machismo up version of that. So, 
it's you could, yeah. Possible. I, I, possible. I liked it when you could just summon actual monsters. I, I'm, I'm a little afraid they're going to push too far into the, we're just going to make custom stat blocks for everything. Because I find a lot of the times those stat blocks are not that interesting. Because um, they're trying to like simulacrum a thing that already exists, but they're like, well, we can't give you everything that that thing has because that'd be too much. Like the Beholderkin one is cool, but it doesn't, it just like you, you get the eye beams, but you don't, you don't get the anti magic, you don't get the different kinds of beams. You know? Yeah. They, they do have a certain degree of uh, they're they're like not yeah they're a little more watered down for sure so it's like yeah I don't know yeah I don't know but again there there is also room there that like conjure wizard could add abilities to the summons like literally add abilities potentially I don't know there's lots of I'd ways like that, they for sure. There's lots of ways they could go. But yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, I'm also hoping that, you know, Necromancer gets basically just throw old Necromancer out and redo it. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, I mean, I I like the the meta of every day for a year casting summon undead or or animate dead cuz it's funny. <laughs> But it is it is kind of goofy, admittedly. <laughs> yeah, it, very. Uh, yeah. And then the last thing Illusionist got was uh, their illusory self feature, which is their ability to like on a reaction, dodge out of the way with like an illusion of themselves. Uh, they still have that. They get it once for free and then they can use it more times using spell slots, which is a thing that you know, a lot of classes got utilizing spell slots for abilities where you should be able to utilize spell slots. So, yeah, cool. Makes sense. Um, and then illusory reality is the same, which is the only good illusion thing that illusion has had. So it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, oh, also, I forgot to mention all of the uh, every um, wizard subclass you know how they all had the uh, X Savant ability? So like Conjuration Savant, yes. Illusion Savant. Yeah, uh, those have all been reworked now where before. So in 2014, it's like, oh, you can copy them down for scrolls for cheaper and you can do it faster if they're within your school, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> uh, Croc Crocker fucking literally just said basically nobody used this ability ever in actual play and our intention was for the various wizards types to have more spells of their school uh, so rather than making you do it through schools or spell through scrolls or spell books we're just going to give you those spells for free so when you become a whatever wizard, you get the X Savant feature, you get two free spells from your school, and then every level up, you get another free one. Or every other level up, something like that. So you're just going to guaranteed get more spells that are actually in your school. <laughs> I do like that, but I, I do kind of wish they kept it somewhere that you could transfer the spells for, for uh, cheaper it does make sense thematically again I, I know why they didn't i'm not mad yeah. that they took it away but i do kind of wish it was still there uh yeah it does feel a little like yeah you know it's like nobody used it and they have to look and go okay but is the problem that nobody used it because gms didn't know how to deal with it or what to do with it or you know yeah there's a lot of ways you could have come at it like i think the reason a lot of people never ended up using it is because it wasn't th it wasn't so good that you had to use it all the time and so gms would like sort of forget about giving their wizard a spell book or scrolls or whatever so it just ended up not coming up and then you just you forget and you just move on with your day and just like eh, whatever you know so no, like that, that's exactly why i'm not mad about it because that is something that i always champion against right that that thing of like if the gm wants to fuck you then you're fucked so i'm yeah. happy that that's yeah. no longer the case but yeah. I do still wish it was there because it had really good flavor. It does have good flavor. It definitely has good flavor. 
Uh, and then uh, the wizard capstone. Uh, well, I guess is this, this isn't technically their capstone because it's 18. But spell mastery. I guess sort of kind of technically got a little bit of a nerf uh, because they have a limitation that the spell must be casting time of one action. Um, and you can only spe- swap one spell at a time rather than both spells at a time. Uh, however, the chosen spell uh, now always counts as prepared and can be swapped on a long rest rather than requiring eight hours of dedicated study. So, yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure it still had to be of one action. Did oh, it? I don't oh, think no. it did. No, it didn't. No, it did not. Yeah. So um, it's technically uh, a little uh, bit. Everyone used it for shield anyway. So like, it's fine. True. Oh, no, you can't True. make it shield anymore. Oh, no. Yeah, you couldn't make it shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, now I don't like it anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so, okay. How many yeah. first level wizard spells are in action? I'm, I'm actually going to check now because my my aggravation on this will, will highly depend on what I'm about to find out. Probably Random quite a lot. Check. I would imagine. Uh first level casting time uh, be, 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 uh, one action there we go okay quite a bit not not yeah. useless but I don't know I still would have preferred if you could still do shield and I, I bet you it's because of shield that they took that out probably probably yeah or at, least, at the very least stuff like shield yeah yeah i mean it does i mean also i i think they also want wizards to be a little more like aggro and not to be super defensive tank machines that kind of is not what a wizard's supposed to be so you know i, I do kind of yeah i get it to a degree so a little bit yeah, of I don't there. Know, some of them not quite were i mean fairy fire actually you just have infinite advantage maybe that's not terrible but <laughs> Jim's magic missile? What the fuck is it? Oh, Ack Inc. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then for their epic boon suggestion, the boon of spell recall, uh, which is basically the one that's like when you're using a level one to four spell slot, roll a D4. If you roll the spells level, the slot isn't expended. Which, yeah, that's a pretty good, wi- that's a pretty good, uh, epic boon to take for a wizard. That's wizard. Weezer. Weezer, yeah. Uh, sad, sad that we didn't get the spell slot. What? Sad that we didn't get the subclasses we wanted. But the ones that are in there, pretty happy with. So, you know, I don't know. Take it as a consolation prize, I suppose. I think if I were to play 2024 Wizard, I'd probably play an Evoker. Probably. I'd probably play an Abjur. That makes sense. I just, I, so like, I, much like a lot of people, Abjur is really cool because you get imprisonment at some point and you literally just go, I just don't want to deal with you anymore. I, I exercise the thought, be gone. You know what I mean? Like, oh my just God. just get really palpitated and just go, be gone. And they're gone. <laughs> I forgot about the most important change for all of Wizard. Hmm? Spellbooks are now can be used as a spell casting foci. Oh, yeah, bro. Okay. I I I'm not going to lie. Bro. I thought I had just missed that that you had that you had said that. Okay. So I'm not crazy. No. no yeah. That is actually the coolest thing. I do really like this a lot. Um <laughs> why why was that not the case before? I don't understand. I Yeah, I don't know. Um uh don't know, but no, it's cool and like spellbooks it We watch Zach Bell in this house. Spellbooks yeah. are sick as fuck. Spellbooks so, are yeah. focuses. They should be. <laughs> uh, yeah. I still think staff supremacy exists, but spellbooks, oh, second. Ah, see, if spellbooks an option, it's all about the spellbook supremacy. I, I want that summoner from Final Fantasy fourteen vibes of fucking flinging the paper at people and magic flames shooting out. Literally ripping pages out and fireballing them at people. Look, I, I get it because I, you know, as a f- former summoner main, I completely understand. But staffs just have so much energy. Like, they just go hard. 
Uh, like nothing goes harder than a staff. <laughs> That's a hundred percent because of Gandalf. I mean, yes, it is definitely Gandalf. You you are definitely a uh, Gandalf coded in this situation for sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this has been uh, BBC one one five three nine six. The 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 whiz. I don't know. La Mega. Damn, only my Latino friends would understand this. <laughs> <laughs> I, am I too white there's for this? A, there's a Spanish radio station called La Mega, uh, and they would they would they would give off the number of the frequency and go da, 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 La Mega, and it just it, they would play like reggaeton and fucking salsa and shit. You can still find this radio station. It was a huge part I of my see. childhood growing up in a Hispanic household. I see. So I'm just I'm actually just too white for this. Got it. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Aunt, I, I know this for a fact. Aunt will get this joke, and Brett will get this joke 100%. Good, good. good to know. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, well, we are not La Mega, nor are we as cool as La Mega. So, we did uh, do it. I, like, you proved me wrong. You did it. Yeah, we did it. I had a feeling. I had a feeling. Now, Ranger episode, that's going to be a different story. Oh baby, uh, did you look at that yet? No. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna bro, lie. I've heard not great things about it, bro. so I've just been like, oh, buddy. Oh, it's, it's so I can't, it bad. I tears, tears in my eyes. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. I really, they really just said, oh. Ranger's just about Hunter's Mark. That's all it does. That's what Ranger does. It's Hunter's Mark. Fantastic. It's the whole fucking class. I swear. It's ridiculous. I, we'll get into it on the Ranger episode because I have I have so many grievances. It's ridiculous. <laughs> all right. Then you get to you get to lead that one. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, so we didn't mention this earlier, but uh we're going to go on a two week break because I'm going on vacation. I'm going to go home to see my other family. Uh, yes. So we'll be away for a little while, but uh, we will be back. Oh, that is next week. I thought uh, in shit. It is next week. Yeah. Well, Skeeter. Yeah. Well, Skeeter. So y'all bitches in two weeks. Probably all the classes will be out by then. Yeah, but then we can speed run it. Uh, you know, I don't know about speed run it, but we can do, I don't know, we'll do something with it. Like, rant about Ra- uh, Ranger. Ranger's gonna be its own episode, because there's no way. There's no way. I'm gonna have to lose I my mean, shit for two hours straight. I, as far as I'm aware, Barbarian didn't change that much. We could just do Barbarian at the beginning, and then... Barbarian? Oh, never, you know what? I lied. I just checked. Barbarian's got a million changes. Never mind. Uh, Barbarian got a lot of cool stuff. A lot of them are uh, not was crazy it? big changes, though. Mm. They're pretty sick. So yeah. Oh well, they do get the new. Actually, no. Now that I'm thinking about it, they do get the new like abilities to use on reckless attack and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll we'll talk. We'll we'll workshop it and come back with whichever <laughs> we'll one. We'll workshop next. another time. But uh, yeah, Rangers gonna be a time. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, this has been us. You may follow us on Twitter if you haven't deleted your Twitter account yet, but if you have, I do not blame you. I'm so, getting close. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. This is so little at this point that I'm just like, why do I have this anymore? I don't really know. I, I'm i not even going to lie. I, I do it to keep up with my Gundam like hobby stuff. <laughs> at least you have a reason. There are so I many accounts. Yeah, well, there's like a million accounts that are like, this is how you do this thing. This is how you do this thing. Do you want to learn how to do, get into painting? I'm like, shit, this is, is kind of relevant to me. And I don't feel like looking these up on YouTube because my attention span is the size of a walnut. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah. All right. For reals this time, we're heading out. To Canada. I'm going to New York. He's not fucking